in reinventing gravity, I have uh, rather extensive descriptions of what is meant by dark matter and how you can observe such a dark matter and the experimental uh, laboratories who, that are presently trying to observe it and uh, how it, over three, three decades now we've, uh, billions of dollars have been spent looking for this uh, substance, exotic substance. And uh, the reason, of course, it's dark is because the particles that make up the dark matter do not interact with ordinary visible matter like protons and electrons. And in particular, the dark matter doesn't interact with light, so you can't see it. This is why it's called dark matter. So, uh, is it worth spending all this money and looking for it? Absolutely. We have to know whether it exists or not. And you have to keep looking for it, even though it's an, a costly business. But of course, if you discover the dark matter, this would be an enormously important uh, uh, discovery in, in the history of science. If you don't discover the dark matter, which is what I think will happen in my personal opinion, then back to the point that you have to modify Einstein-Newtonian gravity. Because without the dark matter, you, the Einstein gravity cannot fit the extensive data that's now available from astrophysics and cosmology. Now one of the other issues in the book is the, to do with the celebrated black holes, which are predicted by Einstein's gravity theory. And uh, then there's a chapter on black holes where I uh, describe what they mean and uh, how it, such black holes arise from Einstein gravity as a prediction of the theory. And uh, the uh, issue of whether we've observed black holes. I mean, everybody's heard about the black holes. Uh, you often read about discovery of another black hole in the, in the New York Times. However, we, we, I think the consensus is amongst observational astronomers that the uh, evidence for black holes is circumstantial. And the reason is that the black hole has a horizon, and this horizon forms uh, as predicted by Einstein's gravity theory. And the horizon is such that no light can escape through the horizon, and once you fall in through this horizon, you can't get back out. Also, the black hole has a singularity at the center of the uh, star that's collapsed, and uh, this singularity is again an unfortunate aspect of Einstein's theory. In fact, Einstein was not happy about black holes, and he wasn't happy about the singularities at the centers of these enormously massive objects. So in, in MOG, in the book, I describe how uh, the, the theory can produce solutions and predictions for the collapse of massive stars, which does not have a singularity at the center of the star. All the matter does not fall into uh, the singularity at the center, and there's no horizon. However, they're massive objects, and they're gray, dark gray, as opposed to being black. So some kind of radiation, some kind of light, light does leak out of this object. I call them dark gray stars. So uh, this is a paradigm shift as well, and uh, plays an important role in the, in the uh, writing of the book. More work has to be done on the issue of these uh, dark gray stars, and this research is still on ongoing. Reinventing gravity has, uh, uh, has to be important for the man or woman in the street uh, for the reason that humanity is concerned about the meaning of life. And uh, if, if there's a paradigm shift, significant paradigm shift in physics and the sciences, then this impacts the whole issue of our understanding of morality and religion. So, uh, the, the, as we know from the history of science, uh, major paradigm shifts have had this enormous influence on civilizations, starting with the Greeks and going through uh, 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 Egyptian, Chinese, 
all the various uh, ancient Islamic ancient civilizations. That's one aspect to uh, the issue of my of the uh, importance of my gravity theory mug for for uh, the person in the street who doesn't uh, is not involved in scientific endeavors. As for practical applications, uh, <coughs> all, most or all of the technology of modern life uh, developed over the last century or one and a half centuries uh, is based on basic ideas that came from physics. Uh, for example, uh, the transistor, which occurs in our computers, uh, the silicon chips, uh, light, uh, the light bulb as invented by Edison, these, all these practical applications uh, arise from some fundamental physical idea which did not appear to have any practical significance when they were discovered by the, the scientists. This also applies to medicine, uh, the, the uh, uh, life has been the life expectancy of humans has been increased because of the enormous advance technical advance of, of, of uh, medical treatment and these medical treatments like radiation are all based on some fundamental discovery in, in physics uh, for example x-rays x-rays were discovered uh, and uh, uh, there was not recognized at the time what enormous influence they would have on, f on the future of medicine and uh, life in general. So uh, it's important to spend money on fundamental research because our fundamental research we're doing today will have enormous consequences for the technology of the future. Reinventing gravity is written for a non-scientist and it has no equations except for one equation, uh, the celebrated equation uh, obtained by Albert Einstein in his special relativity theory, namely E equals mc squared, which is the basis of the atomic bomb. However, uh, there, is a, there are end notes in the book and also so which uh, are for more expert, expert uh, readers and there's a glossary which uh, uh, gives uh, explanations for various uh, basic uh, physics words uh, that occur in the book.